Now, here's our air tool setup. Now, here's the air hammer. Now, what I think I'm gonna wanna do, I think I'm gonna wanna start out with this flat-edged air hammer chisel bit. I think I can get to the side of them and kind of maybe make it break free and then transfer over to something like this, maybe, but maybe one with a sharper point. So for right now, that's what I'm gonna try to do. Uh, that's kind of the plan. I think it should work. use a pick to get that thing open. There we go. Now, let's get back over to the truck. Let's see if this will work well or if it won't. Last time I tried it, it took a lot to get that thing working. Somewhere right in there. And let's see what happens. Where I may have overcut just a touch. This one might need it. That one looks to be 
overcut about an eighth inch deep into the frame. Uh, but other than that, I think it's going to be okay. And then after we get these two out, we're going to move over to the other side, and I think I'll be able to get those two out. I'm having a lot better time now than I did last year when I rebuilt the truck. So I'll be right there. Another. on this side and then we'll hammer them out and we'll see what happens. Switch back to that uh, spade flathead bit for the air hammer. And we'll see if it will take them off like what it did on the other side. And then after that, this should be all of the cutting for rivets I have to do. Hopefully, it'll be almost all of the cutting on this truck. I actually, I do have to do two more rivets that I see. Uh, those will be for the brake line up front. And then just a little bit of cutting here and there. But other than that, we're mostly done with the cutting. Um, I'll have to do a little bit of grinding on that frame rail for the power steering. And then most of that should just bolt right in. Now, let's see if, how this Craftsman Air Hammer will do on this side. Take this stupid mask off. 
That's about the only time I like wearing them. Put on my knees. All right, let's see how this will cut off. Next, we'll get on the other bit and see if it'll punch them out like it did the other side. Other side. because it's hard to tell where exactly it's at. Here. and then try it again. I'm not sure what pressure an air hammer is rated for, so we're gonna do the right thing and give it all of the pressure. All right, let's see if that one will move now after it has about 160 pounds of pressure put into it. Towards the end, we were only hitting it with about 50 pounds of pressure because I forgot that I unplugged the compressor. So here we go. Just hit it right back on the same spot.
Well, we're making some progress. I bolted on this mount. Uh, I only had to drill three or two holes. Uh, that one, that one, I did not drill that center one because if we look over here, um, I have my transmission cross member bolt right here and I did not want to drill another hole directly across from it. So I had to drill on this mount and that all lined up pretty good. I spent probably 20 minutes with a file to open up a couple of the holes. Now, if we come over here, we have this bracket bolted on. Um, so what, I'm, I'd say I'm about a third of the way done with the swap. So my next step is going to be cutting this uh, brake line bracket off, uh, grinding and sanding everything smooth. And then this is a 3 16th plate that I've welded to the outside of my frame. I have to cut it off and smooth everything down because it's in the way. So a lot of cutting up here, cutting down here, cutting right here, cut it right here. It's kind of annoying. That's gonna take a while, but that's fine. And then after that, I might have to do some fine tuning over here with this trimming. And then I'll be able to mount on this bracket, mount on this bracket, and then I'll be able to drill some holes for the power steering gearbox and then weld in those plates. Now, what I'm actually working on over here, so here are those rivets that I ground out earlier in the video. Um, so now I just need to remove this lower crossmember bolt from my transmission and then line up the bracket, line up that bracket right there and then drill out another hole in that bracket for my transmission cross member. So that's what we're working on now. So, yeah. Now the instructions said to go ahead and wire wheel everything so the bracket will sit flush with the frame. So I already have the wire wheel on. I do need to do a little bit of grinding down here on an old weld. And then there's a little spot over here I need to grind as well. So let's go ahead and start cleaning it up. Well, let's go ahead and put on the grinding wheel and take care of that old weld. And then on this one, I might only drill um, one of the holes on the bottom that it wants me to drill because I think I'm gonna have to uh, re-drill the hole that mounts on the frame over here on this bracket. So it will have two. And I previously had the rear or the transmission cross member back here and I'm not going to drill another hole back here because I don't want that many holes in the frame to create a weak spot. So yeah, just let's see if I can take off this wheel. There we go. And then we'll put on the grinding wheel. And I left the other piece that goes on there, so I'll be right back with that. All right, we got the piece that goes on there to tighten that down. And then we'll just snug it down just a little bit. There we go. Put on the other glove. And start grinding.
goggles are hard to see through. Of the bracket like that. Looks like it likes it. Cool. Well, I'll go ahead and get some bolts in here, mark out a couple holes that I have to drill, and then I'll get back with you guys on that. Work out a hole on the frame to drill. So we're gonna go ahead and drill that real quick. And then I know where to drill on that mount. There's that hole. Now let's go all the way up to the biggest size. Well, here's what I've got going on over here. So here is where my transmission mount crossmember bolt is going to go. And I opened up this hole over here just a little bit because I spent like 20 minutes with a file on the other side and I don't want to do that on this side. So it should be ready to go on now without any troubles. Now, in case you guys have been wondering what this bucket of grease is for, what I did on the other side I got a nice handful of it, smeared it all around where the bare metal was, where this mount's going to be. And my idea is that that's going to keep it from ever rusting because there's no way that the grease will wash off. And this whole cross member, or this whole frame is oily, so there's no way paint's going to stick to it. So I'll just take a nice big glob of it, like so, and then just smear it around. Just wherever that mount's gonna touch, just cover that because it'll keep it from rusting. People use grease all the time to keep things from rusting. And now I'm keeping it from being super thick. Smeared all around. This is an old bucket of Napa wheel bearing grease. Um, it's kind of dirty. It's got dirt and stuff in it, so that's why I'm not using it for wheel bearings anymore. But yeah, wherever there's bare metal, and then don't forget about the underside. Just smear that grease all around. Makes a mess for working on it, but whatever. Rather have a mess than have this thing rusting. Now a lot of people try to wash the grease off their frames and motors and stuff, but here I am just wiping it on. Now that will keep that from ever rusting. Now I'll do the same thing up there in the front when I bolt on that shock tower mount and the coil spring mount piece. 
extreme pressure. That'll work for this. Now, let's see, first things first, let's go ahead and let's hope that those holes will line up that I drilled. I'll find out here in a few minutes. Let's get our washers on here. And then now let's get on the bottom side and see if they have lined up. And it looks like they did not. That would line up there, but that pushes it away from the frame quite a bit. It's all right. I can get the really not that far off. What do we have going on? I don't be that far off. Here's how I fix this mount. Um, the center bolt, I tried to get it to go in a little bit. It moved in, I mean, a little bit. And I tried to get this one to come out, and it came out. So it should line up a lot better. I'm thinking I'll probably end up grinding this smooth and then probably welding it to the frame if one of these do not line up. So it'll at least get held in there tightly because I'm not worried about removing it. Well, would you look at that? We finally got it in, only after fighting it for an hour and a half. So we have the grade eight bolts up here. Now let's look at the work down here. Like the instructions said, this back side of the frame has a slight angle and they wanted a washer as a spacer. So I was able to do that here. This side, I did not notice the angle because it where the nut and bolt is, it's touching the frame. You can see how it's slightly, slightly lifted um, after that, but where it's touching, it doesn't need a spacer. Unlike this one where we can clearly see it needed a spacer. So here's what we've got going on here. I drilled my own hole for that middle bolt. That's for my transmission cross member. I was not about to drill another hole right next to it. I had to elongate the holes that I drilled on this piece. Um, so yeah, that's that. And that's nice and solid, not going anywhere. Here's all my nice linkage stuff I built for my uh, transfer case. Now, the next step is going to be cutting this. So, like I said, there's that plate we got. we have to cut we have to cut this mount off and then sand everything. And then we're that much closer to welding everything in and putting the axle underneath it. And then pulling out that sterling 10 and a quarter for the 10 and a half.